a dicey topic, isn't it, for all the people out there on the interwebs? So I think as most people are aware, Dave Chappelle's recently put out his comedy special. It's available now on Netflix called Sticks and Stones. I think it was in the works for a while. Um, his last special that came in a sort of two-pack, um, one filmed in the OR, one filmed in the belly room of the comedy store was, you know, impeccable. But I think Sticks and Stones is probably tops the lot of it. Just because it's so timely, you know, it talks about loads of, you know, current sort of like societal issues that are sort of taboo from, you know, um, trans rights to homosexuality to politics um, to conspiracy theories to the stuff about Juicy Smoulier. Like, just some amazing, amazing jokes in there, really clever observations. And just, you know, Dave Chappelle being Dave Chappelle, a real master of his work and just, you know, an absolute wizard on the stage. But as per usual with these sort of um, comedy specials, they do tend to... Um, a little bit of trigger a particular portion of the of the population who are intent on not being the butt of the jokes in any situation which is something i've never really kind of got i get the idea that stuff can be offensive and it can annoy you but the idea that no one can take the piss out of you that you're above joking right you're above reproach or you're above taking the piss out of is hmm don't know what it is it's it's just not what you'd expect the internet to be right if the internet isn't going to be a place for people to troll which i don't think it should be right but you know i think some people out there think trolling is funny so you know it happens quite often and sometimes the trolling can be really funny but if it's not going to be that then at least we're going to be able to crack jokes right what's what's the point of us browsing and flicking our fucking thumbs up and down if we're not going to actually kid around and have a good time but of course you know they should help i'm sure was aware of this so his current way of working where he just makes a special and then kind of disappears sort of works really well, right? Um, it's sort of like the idea behind how you should use social media where you should just post what you want to post, post and dump, keep it moving, don't kind of always kind of engage with or communicate with your audience on also on all platforms, which is kind of probably goes against what someone like a Gary Vee would say. But in general for peak creativity, in order to kind of make sure that you're... Um, performing at the highest level you can't really be having that many forms of input coming in you you need to be able to be just putting out stuff without and you know putting out stuff by feeling right being aware of what currently is going on in the, in your life and around you listening feeling stuff and then putting it out but in terms of sitting there listening and reading to everything what, what everyone's kind of go, regurgitating out there is just probably not a good way to do it so i think dave Chappelle's routine of i make a special i go and tour it for you know whatever year record it put it on netflix and just completely disappear from social media or the internet is a great idea because i'm sure that the backlash will be is much more severe when you're online because you know the news is, the news cycles change quite quickly now now no one gives a shit about dave Chappelle. we're not talking about antonio brown soon no one will care about antonio we just keep cycling on but this is a quite a cool interesting article that really speaks upon what's happened so this is from the daily mail it says the following Dave Chappelle's controversial new Netflix special gets a, zero, a rare zero rating from critics it's not really rare because they give zeros to everybody um, following backlash over his jokes about Mike Jackson but fans hit back and award it with a 99% approval rating now this is a good this is probably a good reflection of just what public outrage actually looks like online right because you hear a lot of people say it a lot when they get in trouble with celebrities oh when someone's giving them advice oh you shouldn't listen to the minority right the minority are the loudest and they you know whatever and the majority of people don't really care but you don't as a probably as, as a person going through it you don't really you don't believe them you probably think they're talking out their ass they don't in the situation that you're in you feel all the pain you feel all the vitriol you feel the hate coming your way but this is an actual physical manifestation of the reality of the fact that most of the time most people don't care it's just a small minority of people that are always upset and they're the ones that try and convince the rest of us to be upset too and this Dave Chappelle festival is a good example of it because there's this screenshot they put up on here this whole article is no point in reading it because it's daily mail just going to be they're just going to talk about the obvious but essentially he goes on and you know he talks about trans people he talks he talks about everyone gets jokes on in the whole special right? no one's above not getting jokes on but the interesting part of it is the way Rotten Tomatoes dealt with it now Rotten Tomatoes is you know again a, a site that I'm sure most people do use in terms of getting their movie reviews and recommendations of what to watch i tend to not use it that often not because you know i don't really watch enough movies to kind of justify going in and reading it i'd rather just like go and find a top 10 list of best films to watch for a certain period and just watch them and start from then and kind of you know hone your taste over a period of time but for people that are really obsessed with going to cinema every week it's probably a good resource but they start to do this annoying thing where they kind of like um they i think it might be because of star wars or maybe captain um, Mar Mar captain america marvel whatever her name is a uh, brie lance's movie 
one a movie got trolled by the fans so what they've done now is that when a movie comes out or when a tv series comes out they will only let critics review it for the first couple of weeks that it's out so the critics will form a review and then there'll be an audience score which is quite cool right because you get to see the that the kind of split because most critics will hate a movie like mission impossible with tom cruise but most audiences will like it because it's just full out action right so you can get an idea of what of where you fit in it's sort of like moonlight moonlight wasn't a good movie but it had it was more of a it was more the message it kind of was able to uh broadcast to the world right what it kind of represented was more important than it being an actual good quote-unquote movie um so this rotten tomatoes uh, <laughs> review of david appell clearly shows that for the most part social media outrage is uh very much um limited to a small amount of people because the critics went out and completely panned it right they gave it a 30 percent score in the beginning it was zero percent did no one rate it was all they all got one star so they go and to kind of verify critics who review a lot of movies and they kind of take what they they take what they say and sort of like make an aggregate and they all scored it a zero but then when the internet saw they were like what the fuck we we love this we enjoyed this um special i love my ass off from the beginning to the end and then they voted it all the way up to 100 now it's averaging out to 99 percent, which again shows that for the most part i think now most people are saying it i think we're reaching the end the crescendo of council culture it's now shifting because i think we've seen enough we've seen enough of the social justice warrior types who kind of eat their own right who kind of turn on each other who the same type of people who are pining for Joe Biden to run against Trump so to get him out of the White House are now kind of picking and prodding at everything Biden says and now he's problematic. They they they're unable to compromise, they're unable to uh self reflect, they're unable to be rational. It, everything's really like, you know, absolute. It's always kind of, you know, the end of the world or things are not gone far enough. So because of that, I think the general public has kind of seen that, you know, on both sides, on the right on the conservative and on the liberal side, they're just all gone a bit cuckoo gaga. Everyone's just sitting in the middle, making up their own minds. So then when you watch Dave Chappelle's comedy special on Netflix, you're like, you know what? I laughed at this. I found it funny. Even though there were bits and pieces of it that were offensive or that made me feel a bit weird. I know it's comedy. I know it's not that big of a deal. There are movies that I watch sometimes that are crap or have an awkward or cringy scene. You fast forward them if you can, right? It's no big deal. The idea that you have to, that's the thing that really gets me about this, right? You can not like him. You can think he's not funny. You can think he's grotesque. You can think he's rude. You can think he's, um, un, un, what you call it, unsophisticated or whatever it may be called, or, you know, ignorant, blah, 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 whatever, whatever kind of phrase you want to pull out of the book. But do you actually need, does he need to, like, stop doing what he's doing just to make you happy? Should he just not be around anymore? Is Should he not have a Netflix deal? Do you want to completely um delete him from the history of the world like what is what are the, what is the outrage about right like that's the thing i don't understand it's like these critical reviews aren't like oh for, i personally didn't find it interesting and i found it deplorable it's more so it's a rallying cry to everyone else like don't watch this guy like we're banning him we're telling the world he is not worthy of your time and it's like who are you to tell me what i should and shouldn't watch or listen to that's the issue that i have with it. it's like we're all allowed to listen to or watch whatever we want to watch with the, that's you know that's the idea of living in a free and democratic part of the Western Hemisphere. You can do and choose what you like. But for some reason, there's a small group of people, and this is exactly an example of it from this Rotten Tomatoes screenshot, right, who have deemed some things to be appropriate and some things not. It goes, it's like it's like living back at home again, isn't it? It's like you, can't, you can only watch certain things at a certain time. What? I'm a grown adult. I can watch whatever I want to watch. But again, Dave Chappelle probably doesn't care. He's probably somewhere in his onesie. Uh, living the life enjoying himself but yeah it's a very interesting um state of affairs like i said i think we are reaching the end of council culture i don't think people are going to be able to tolerate it anymore because you know what's left to watch if we can't watch this like nanette and those other cringy shows they have on comedy central like isn't that what else should we watch then i i you know what i'd love to see i'd love to see a list of comedy specials that um these critics thought were great this year right because I, I i think someone pulled up a list actually of that um What's the name? AOC documentary that was on Netflix that kind of profiled the the squad as they called those four uh, Democratic women who were kind of leading the charge um, of socialism in that regard. That got amazing reviews. That I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised it did because you know they are who they are. But I'm interested to see what they think is a good review. These critics, but for me personally, I loved it. I thought I'm a big fan of it. Loads of crude jokes. Yeah, he jokes on Louis C.K., Kevin Hart, R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, uh, Macaulay Culkin, Michael Jackson's accusers, um, T.I., Nas. Everyone got it. No one was real above reproach. I fucking love this whole thing, man. It was really, really cool. Actually, there's a clip of actually Nas 
um, and Ti in the front row actually of one of the, one of the shows. Absolutely crying. I think there's Jar Buster Rams is in there too. So loads of great uh, celebrity cameos you see when you watch the show. But in general, a, a really good performance by Dave Chappelle. Again, he doesn't need my pats on the back. But again, if you're a fan of his comedy, if you're a fan of Chappelle's show, and you wanna, you want you know something a bit interesting, something a bit racy, something that doesn't you know treat you like a baby, I recommend you check it out. It's on Sticks and Stones on Netflix now, available where you do have Netflix. And if you don't have Netflix, come on. Do a bit of a Google, you know where to find that shit. 